I have another low carb ketogenic meal I wanna share with you. Today, it is lasagna. Now, before you turn this video off, you're really gonna to wanna to try this one. Keep watching. So yes, really, this is a meal that you're going to want to consider making for yourself. So what makes this different from any other meal is what's not in it. And that is pasta. There are no lasagna noodles in this meal. And when I served it to my wife recently, she said that this was the first of all the meals that I had made that she would eat on a regular basis. That in fact, she could, if I hadn't told her, she would not have known that there was no pasta, no lasagna noodles in it. I sub those out because really lasagna is almost an ideal meal for those of us on low carb or ketogenic diets as long as we can substitute out the pasta for something else. So that's what I've done. But what I think I'll do is I'll take you down to my ground surface where I'm preparing this and I'll share with you what that secret ingredient is. So honestly, this is such a simple recipe to make, whether you're at home or out in the woods. You can use virtually any lasagna recipe that you do now. You only have to sub out the lasagna noodles. And what we're going to be subbing out for lasagna noodles is, well, in this case, turkey breast, the deli sliced turkey breast. I used chicken breast in another one recently, but this time I'm going to be using turkey breast, and this is a herb roasted uh, turkey breast, the cheapest one I could find at the store. And what you want to look for, if as best you can, is to check the nutrition facts to see how what else is in it besides turkey. Unfortunately, this does have a little bit of sugar in it. Not a lot, but a little bit. I would have preferred to have a turkey breast or a chicken breast with no sugar whatsoever. But for the amount that I'm going to be using, it won't add up to a whole lot of carbohydrates. In fact, they say, what is it? Three grams of carbohydrates in four slices. I'm going to be using about 12 slices total. So uh, yeah, there's, there's a few grams in here, but not as much as there would be had I been using regular pasta. So that, I suppose, is what you might call the secret ingredient. We'll put that aside. In here, I have my marinara sauce. Marinara sauce is simply just tomato sauce, more like a spaghetti sauce, if you will. It can be used for any number of things. It's, I think the only difference is what do you put in it. Now, I make my own, and the reason I make my own is because most of the ones on the shelves in the stores have added sugar. And I'm, you know, I'm trying to get as much sugar out of my diet as possible. And if I can avoid it by making my own, which is actually very, very simple and easy to do, then why not do it? You can buy keto or low carb, no carb, no sugar, uh, marinara sauce, tomato sauces, but usually you have to go to a specialty store and you'll pay more for them. So how do I make my own? Very simple. I go to the grocery aisle, I find the diced tomatoes, and make sure in the back of the label that there are no added ingredients whatsoever. And then I just put them in a pot and slowly reduce them over a low temperature to take off most of the water. And then that's also when I'm adding the other ingredients that I may have. Now, I didn't in this one. I did add garlic, a fair amount of garlic, in fact, but I didn't add tomatoes. I added a lot of traditional herbs in here, uh, you know, Italian seasonings, oregano, basil, the thyme, major, you know, just about everything I could think of I added in for spices in here and a couple of drops of hot sauce just to give it a little bit a bite. But when you get to the point where you think it's thick, thick, thick enough, you can either use it as is, or what I like to do is I have an immersion blender and I'll make it a smooth sauce out of it. So that's what I'm using today is one I made at home. Another ingredient is cottage cheese or ricotta. Ricotta is better than cottage cheese. Uh, sometimes it costs a little bit more. This is a full of fat uh, cottage cheese as I can find. That's what you're trying to look for here is a high fat ricotta or cottage cheese. Um, the leaner it is, like one or two percent, then usually that means there's more milk sugar in there. They don't add it, it's just in the milk, than if you get a more full fat one. But having said that, this is a 2% lasagna cottage cheese. It's all I could find before coming out in the woods today. And it will work. I just recognize that it does add a little bit of milk sugar in it. 
mozzarella already shredded as well. So I have my mozzarella, I see it going soft under the heat here. And the last ingredient, but not the least, is ground beef. And I have ground beef and medium ground beef, but it could be ground uh, pork, uh, a sausage, uh, ground turkey, I guess, ground chicken, whatever it is that you like to put in your lasagnas, then you can use that. Now, I brought mine out raw. I don't recommend this. I only brought it out raw because I wanted to show you cooking this over my uh, charcoal stove of the day so that you can see it going together. Normally, if I was going to do this, I would have cooked this at home so that I wouldn't have to worry about spoilage. I think you could probably also go with dehydrate it and just take the time to rehydrate it if you're going to be out for a little while. But then again, some of these other ingredients aren't dehydrated. So cooked is probably the way to go. Once cooked, I'm going to be adding the marinara sauce to it. So I could have done both of those at home. Again, I just wanted to show you doing it. So all I'm waiting for now is for my stove to come up to heat, which I think it is. Then we'll get this beef on and uh, we'll fry that down and add a few more spices to it. By the way, this is going to be my baking dish for today. This is the top of my 14, or the little bowl, or whatever you want to call it, dish that goes in the 14 centimeter zebra billy pot. And I think it's going to be just the right size. I hope it's going to be the right size. It will fit in my cooking system, and I hope it's uh, just the right size for the depth I need to uh, get all the ingredients in. Okay, let's get the beef in the fry pan. So first thing I did say, it is a charcoal setup today because yes, again, we are under another fire ban. And while a wood fire isn't permitted, charcoal cooking is. But it gave me an opportunity to do something I had wanted to do for a while, which was demonstrate using the firebox freestyle with charcoal. And I have it in its six side uh, configuration here. And uh, it's got a, a, you know, it's a good size at this point. I don't think I need it to be any larger than that. The only thing I've done differently here is I raised the grate off of the bottom up into one, where is it? one notch up from the bottom. So it's just a little bit higher than it was. And that's only because with the amount of charcoal I'm using, I just wanted to bring it a little closer to the top of the stove. And uh, yeah, oh, by the way, it's also my stainless steel ones, the ones that were sent to me by Steve for the review video that I did. Uh, yes, I do have the titanium ones now, but you know, the stainless steel ones need some love too, right? So that's why I brought them out. Okay, fry pan going on, my Pele pan. I am going to add just a tiny bit of olive oil to this as it heats up, just to kind of help keep the meat from sticking, even though it is seasoned. It doesn't hurt to have a little bit of extra oil. I can also see that I'm on a bit of a slope here, but that's all right. Oh, the wind's picking up around here right now. It's going to take a few minutes for that to come up to heat, even though the charcoal is warm. But that's all right as well. There's my beef gone in, and it is starting to sizzle. Good, that's what I wanted to hear. I'll need a glove. There won't be a lot to see here as I get started, but I'll explain what I'm doing. So all I'm looking to do at this point is brown the beef, take all the pink out of it, and then add in my marinara sauce. Once it's mixed through, I'll take it off of the heat, and then I can start combining all the other ingredients in the layers in the little baking dish that I have. What do I need here? Oh, my spice kit, that's what I need. Reach over and grab my spice kit. Again, I guess for convenience, I could have done this step at home, which is to add, this is some Cajun. A little extra heat never hurts. Garlic, and although there's quite a bit of garlic in my marinara sauce, it doesn't hurt to have some there. Not the hot sauce, not the salt, where is, there it is, my herb de Provence, which is just mixed herbs, basically. There, that's all mixed through. Everything's coming back up to temperature quickly. Glove back on. And it'll take a couple of minutes for this to brown up. Not very long though. Lots of heat coming. Oh, the smell. Oh yeah. 
You know, I never claim to be a real committed amateur chef of any kind. I don't do a lot of my own cooking at home, uh, mostly because I don't think my wife likes me in the kitchen all that much, but I do some. And I think everybody has their own favorite recipes for certain meals like lasagna. Well, that's the one you got to use. Use your favorite recipe for this. And I think you'll find that it will adapt perfectly. All right, that's pretty close to being pink or pink taken out of it. I'll give it another couple seconds. I don't think I'll even need to cut away. The pink is pretty much out of it. Very good. So as far as amounts, I haven't given you anything yet. I'll give you the amounts that I'm using for this meal. But what I'm going to do in the video description is, um, I guess I could give you the amounts for what I'm cooking, but what I want to do is give you the link to where I got this recipe. It's from a YouTube channel known as Keto Focus, and I've had a few good recipes uh, that I picked up from that channel. They're, they're not intended for the woods, but you know, ones like this are quite easily adaptable to the woods. Ready for the marinara sauce. I should have had my spoon ready. Where is that at? Okay. Okay. Marinara sauce is added. I'll mix that through. And you know, it's just that easy. That's all there was to it. So that's step number one. I'll take this off of the heat now. It'll cool off some, but that's fine because I need it to be manageable for putting in the layers in the uh, vessel I have, the 14 centimeter zebra pot, pan, whatever you want to call it. Okay, that is now ready for the next step. I'll get set up and show you that. And my marinara sauce, I let it simmer for a few more minutes, just drove off a little bit of the moisture, and now it is not my marinara sauce, but it's a combination of roast beef or ground beef and marinara sauce all ready to go into my baking dish. So there is a sequence for doing this. It's not critical, but it does have a reasoning behind it. And I did not, or I think I started to mention what my amounts are. I just cooked up a quarter pound of ground beef and then I added four ounces of my marinara sauce. I have three quarters of a cup of mozzarella here. I have three tablespoons of cottage cheese and I have a full unopened package of this uh, roast turkey. I'm not gonna be using all of it for this, but uh, we'll see how it goes. Uh, okay, so first step is put in a layer of your meat mixture, uh, not a whole lot, just enough to kind of cover the bottom. Part of the reason you're doing this is you would do this normally. Hmm. I may not get as many layers in this dish. Maybe I should have gone with the 12 centimeter zebra instead of the 14. Well, it was a guess. No, well, we're just gonna go with it as is. Yeah, what was I starting to say? Um, yeah, normally you would put in meat, then a layer of noodles, so that your noodles weren't sticking to the bottom of your cooking vessel. All right, here is my turkey. Uh, you know what's really cool about this? This is a perfect size. Look at that, I don't have to do anything. Oh, gee, you'd think it was made for doing this. It is perfectly the right size for going inside of this baking vessel. Now, I'm gonna put in a second layer of meat. I'm going to spread that around and add some of my cottage cheese. It's really, how should I say, a bit of a judgment. I think I'm going to be doing three layers, so I'm probably going to put in a third of it, the cottage cheese, the meat mixture, and everything else. As we go, let me see, what do I add on top of this? Of course, I'm going to add a little bit of my mozzarella. It's warm out here and this stuff is all soft. All right. 
another layer of turkey. And what, I've, what I'm doing here is I'm putting in two full slices for each layer. Judgment call. You can put in as much or as little as you want. Two slices of this, and they call it thin sliced, but two slices of this seems to be about the same thickness as a regular lasagna noodle would be. Maybe a third slice would work. You know what, I'm going to put a third slice in. Why not? It'll change my macros, but it'll just slant them towards protein. Some more of my meat sauce. Spread that around. Looking good. More cottage cheese. Now there's a lot of things I could have added to this, like spinach. I didn't get any onions or anything in there. I think I'm gonna go one more layer. I'm going a little bit too much of my mozzarella in the first couple layers there. So, last little bit of turkey in. See if I can get it spread around. And in this case, here's where we use up the rest of the meat. We're running out of places to put things here. Just filling this up perfectly. The last of my cottage cheese. Really, if you can get the ricotta, it makes things much richer in flavor than using cottage cheese. But you know, got to buy for years using cottage cheese. And then the last of my mozzarella. Don't waste it, Mark. Get it all in there. Okay, there is my meal prepared and ready to go into the oven, but this is my oven. So I guess I better get this cleaned out and then heat it back up and then we'll put everything on in my oven. And when I'm ready, bring it back. All right, I've been preheating my little oven. My little oven is nothing more than my Pele pan with a marble stone that I did find at the thrift store that fits in perfectly. I was looking for something that had full contact with the bottom of the pan, like a pizza stone, but the little pizza stones are just tiny, bit too big for this size pan, but that marble one works perfectly. So that's my heat sink for the oven, and I'll be putting the rest of the ingredients in on top of that. But what I have to do first, as that is heats up, is get a few of the pieces of charcoal out that I can layer them on top of the pan. Uh, what have we got there? Ooh, there is some heat. I was considering putting some additional charcoal in, but to be honest, this isn't going to be on all that long. All right, there is my lasagna. And let me put the cover on. All I have to do now is put those pieces of charcoal. Now, if you were at home, you would run it at about 400 degrees for about 15 minutes. And that's all you need because all the ingredients in here are cooked. All you're really doing is bringing everything up to temperature ensuring that the mozzarella is melted, that everything is bubbly hot, and you're good to go. So temperature and time are not as critical with this meal out here in the woods as some others are, where you have to keep a closer eye on them. I'll let this go for 15 minutes. I doubt I'm at 400 degrees with this charcoal, but it'll be plenty hot to do the job that it needs to do. I'll watch to make sure that the heat doesn't go to my charcoal. Maybe I'll have to add a few more pieces or maybe bring another one up on top. I'm not necessarily looking to brown anything on top. I'm just looking to provide heat top and bottom and that oven should do a good job of that. All right, in about 15 minutes, we'll do the big reveal and see how it turned out. Actually, pretty much exactly 15 minutes. I did check once it was bubbling, so I don't know if it needed exactly the whole 15 minutes. I gave it to it anyway, just to prevent any accidents of that dropping into my meal. Take that off, take the lid off, and that's what a lasagna looks like. Look at that, bubbling away nicely, everything melted. 
Oh my goodness. All right. Well, I do have to let it cool down for a few minutes before I can eat it, but I can take it off of the heat. And I think I can put my kettle on, use what's left of the heat in there for coffee. I should probably add those pieces of charcoal back in, the ones that were on top. Right on. All right. Uh, only thing left to do now is give this a few minutes to cool down just enough that I can cut it and eat it, and that's when we'll do the taste test. All right, so this is still kind of hot. So I have it on my kneeling pad to hold it across my lap with my bandana at hand. Only thing left to do is to cut a piece out and see what it looks like on the inside. Maybe I'll put my glasses on for this. All right. I'll tell you, it smells like lasagna. It looks like lasagna. But does it taste like lasagna? Cuts like lasagna. You know, I'm sure you know this already, but at home, if you're making lasagna, you... Uh, if you leave it set a little bit, it sets up firmer over a little bit of time. But I'd say that's set up pretty good. That's a bit too big for me to take into my mouth, so I'm going to have to cut a piece off of that. What I found making this is the chicken or turkey, in this case, does shrink back a little bit in size. <laughs> I hope the wind isn't cutting my sound off too bad. The breeze has picked up in the last little bit here. Second taste. Second taste. Look at that. Oh my goodness. So I made this at home. It impressed my wife. It impressed me. It impressed my mother-in-law. That was no easy feat. And now I'm here eating it in the woods. It's even better. Um, the secret ingredient, why it tastes better in the woods? I think one of my viewers will, will get this, pine needles. <laughs> I have trouble whenever I'm cooking here. I'm under a big white pine, a couple of them here. It doesn't matter what I do, there's always pine needles falling into my food. So I had to fish a few of them out of this as well uh, as I prepared it. So maybe it's the pine needles that give it that extra flavor out here in the woods. Or maybe it's just the fact that I'm out here in the woods. Oh my goodness, this is good. Really, I know I say this, but often enough with these dishes, but this is the one to try. It doesn't matter if you're on a low-carb diet, ketogenic diet or not. Try this. Just try this. You'll, I think you'll be impressed. Use your favorite lasagna recipe. Substitute out the noodles with the chicken or the turkey breasts. I, you, you will be impressed. There's just no way around it. Okay, so just a couple comments before I, I go back to eating. Number one, the recipe that I have, this, this amount in this 14 centimeter zebra pot pan, um, it turned out to be just the right amount to put in here. I was worried that the pan was going to be too big. Not at all. It was just the right amount. It is actually one quarter of the full recipe as it's listed on the Keto Focus website. I'll put, like I said, I'll put this information in the video description. So I am eating... And, and, of course, that recipe said the full recipe would serve eight people. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> eight not very hungry people or eight people and this plus a lot of other stuff. Because I'm going to eat all of this. There's no question I'm going to eat all of this. This will give me, and I'm approximating now based on the full-size recipe, somewhere around 750 to not quite 800 calories. So about 750 calories. Uh, based on what a an eighth of the recipe would have been. That's a good sized meal. It's not a huge meal, but it is a good sized meal. This and the good sized meal at supper will give me all the calories I'd want for the day. But I honestly, once I finish this, I'm not sure how much more I could actually eat. But I can have coffee, and I am going to do that. My water's boiling, and uh, you know, charcoal is great. The charcoal brought that water to a boil, even though most of it was spent. Anyway. 
try this. Please try this and let me know what you think. If you have any questions, if you have any comments, please put them in the comment section. As I mentioned, all the information, the recipe and the link to the original video where I got this from will all be there as well. But until next time, get out and explore and take that path less traveled because it will make all the difference. Bye for now.